Thank you very much, Dr. Kessler. Our next speaker, Dr. Catherine Magruder. Thank you. I'm delighted to comment on such an important piece of work. The findings are solid, combining proven economics methodology with our most current epidemiology findings on community prevalence of mental disorders. My brief remarks will cover three points. One, the need to focus attention to the general medical sector. Two, the needs of primary care providers with regard to detecting and treating anxiety disorders. And three, organizational and policy issues that must be overcome if we are to use this work as a springboard for action. First, the investigators have found that 54% of the cost of anxiety disorders is due to non-psychiatric medical expenditures. Because this is where most of the action is, it is clear that this is also where most of the opportunities are, both to improve care for those who suffer from anxiety disorders and to reduce unnecessary medical costs. Post-traumatic stress disorder, for example, is the second most common mental disorder in primary care and, as the investigators have shown, contributes disproportionately to the total cost of anxiety disorders. Yet there have been no studies in the primary care sector to date to improve detection of this very serious disorder. There are many reasons for this situation, chief among them being the current structure of primary care. Primary care as we approach the millennium is characterized by high volume visits, precious little time for each encounter, few provider incentives to detect yet another problem, especially a non-life-threatening one, which could mean taking more than the allotted 10 minutes per patient, difficulties in providing and maintaining treatment for mental disorders in sufficient intensity to achieve remission, and last, problems in referring to mental health specialists. If we are to make a serious dent into public mental health problems, especially anxiety disorders, these issues in general medical care must be addressed. Primary care physicians need at least three specific tools to improve their competence in dealing with patients with anxiety disorders. One, improved screening tools, which are brief enough and appropriate for primary care patients, <coughs> should be developed and tested. Two, disease management programs, much like those that are in place for diabetes and other chronic medical illnesses, which address the chronic recurrent nature of anxiety disorders need to be developed and implemented. Three, implementation of these programs must be accompanied by provider education with hands-on learning experiences, which include how to deal with anxious patients, distinguishing between symptoms of anxiety and other medical disorders, and educating patients about their diagnosis and what to expect in referral and treatment. Dr. Dole, a psychiatrist who is with us today, will be speaking in the next um, portion about some of his experiences in training primary care providers about anxiety disorders. Even the most informed and well-intentioned primary care provider will be stymied in his or her efforts to be responsive to patients with anxiety disorders if the organization and structure of care are not such that quality care can be provided. For example, if primary care physicians do not have the time to counsel patients or follow up on medications themselves, then health systems must assign appropriate staffing le levels. This could mean adding a mental health facilitator to the primary care team to ensure that a trained health professional, such as a psychologist, a social worker, or a nurse, performs these time-consuming tasks and can, at the very least, contact patients regularly by phone, serving as a link with the primary care physician. Additionally, incentives need to be built into the system so that detection and treatment of anxiety disorders becomes a performance measure in medical systems, much like blood pressure screening and control and diabetic control are performance indicators by which individual clinicians and clinics are judged in many large systems today. Once detection, management, and referral packages are in place, there's no reason in the world that this should not be a routine part of every primary care practice and one that should be included in the practice report card. Last, reimbursement barriers need to be removed for both patients and clinicians. Many patients are reluctant to accept a referral from their primary care physician to a mental health specialist because of the high out-of-pocket costs. Even in primary care, there may be differential reimbursement rates when a mental disorder is coded. Not only does this perpetuate stigma among patients who have these disorders, but also among providers. 
In summary, it's time to focus attention on the general medical sector in order to reduce the prevalence and cost of anxiety disorders in the United States. This includes attention to providers so that they are equipped and prepared to deal with patients who have anxiety disorders, and as importantly, attention to the many primary care system issues which make it difficult to implement and sustain effective strategies for dealing with these disorders. And last, but certainly not least, policies need to change so that differential reimbursement for mental disorders is not a barrier for patients or for their providers. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Magruder. Our next speaker, uh, Dr. Brian Doyle.